the ADV riders uh, had to win again. I'm going to walk through putting all the jets back in and doing an assembly on. Uh, we're just going to do the front carburetor and the back carburetor is um, very similar. So, got my driver. I'm going to turn the torque way down on it so that I can get these jets in. This is the 40 air jet. And I don't know if this is going to work or not. I usually don't use this. Turn this around. Trying to make things go a little quicker. Um, so, all right. Don't want to over torque these. The 70 goes in the, the second position. Um, calling the this is the first position, this is the second position, and the third position of the air jets is the 80. I have my torque all the way down on that. But. Okay, so front carburetor has the throttle position sensor on it with the ADV machines uh, jet kit. That's a 148. Goes into this right here. Make sure that that's not super tight, but snug, because the jets can come out. This is a 45 Pilot, slides right down into here. Um, that's for sea level to about 2,500 feet. Um, so all the main, the main jet and the pilots back in. Um, now we're going to assemble the idle mixture screw. I went through and and cleaned that all up with a Scotch Brite. So it's this then the spring itself this little washer that we fished out earlier that slides down over the top like that let me put the o-ring back on that kind of keeps the whole assembly together so that when we set it down in there it doesn't fall off okay we're going to take that Drop it down into there. And that, that makes me nervous. So I'm going to use my small driver. You don't want to seat that hard. It's uh, very fairly delicate. So you, you'll turn this in until it stops. You feel it. And for the Adventure Machines kit, it's going to be one and three quarters turn out. One half, one half, and three quarter. That's a good starting point. Um, can be different for um, different applications and, and elevations. So that's a, a good baseline. Make sure that this gasket surface is clean um, and your float needle is clean. And you want to make sure that there's no real evident wear on this rubber tip. Um, they do wear over time. This one's got just a little bit of wear, but it should be okay. Um, I'll slide the retainer back onto the clip and the tab. Pivot through it again. And then just drop this back in. That drops down into there like that. I'm going to take the retaining screw and get it back in there. Okay. These are um, some fairly basic measuring tools that I have created. You can get them on adventuremachines.com or advmachines.com. Um, for the kit we typically set them at three and a half millimeters and what we want the float to do is just kiss the needle and we'll take this tool and run it across the gasket surface and see, I don't know if you can see that or not, that it just touches the 
three and a half, just barely. So I'm pretty happy with that. If you need to adjust the height one way or the other, go in here with a screwdriver like this, twist up or down, depending upon which direction you need the float to go. The other thing to notice is the float needle, this is spring loaded. So when the float touches it, you don't want it to compress it when you're measuring um, the float height. Okay? Full covers are the same. I cleaned those all up. So they're the same front to back. Um, put the screws into this real quick. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to assemble the slides. Okay. So take a slide like this. So the needle clip positions are measured from the blunt end down. That's a one, that's a five. It's in the clip position three. This is the take-up shim. It's the thicker one. It goes over the top. And then the thin stainless shim. Slide that over the tip. And then drop that. Pick this assembly up. and It's, gosh, it's hard to do this and talk all at the same time. You don't want it to fall off because you want it to stay put. And then at an angle, get the tip started and then carefully let it drop in because you don't want the upper take-up shim to fall off. Take this guy, line it back up, and pop it back in. And it's spring-loaded a little bit, so just give this a little push, make sure that everything feels okay, and you're good to go. Drop the assembly back in here. You want to guide the needle back in through the needle jet, otherwise it'll hang up. Make sure that the diaphragm is out into that gasket surface, and sometimes it can be a little difficult. Like this one's a little bit shrunk. Make sure that it's out and flat. Take your spring, set it back in there. These go on one way. Push it back down in here and just give it a little bit of a wiggle. And before you put any screws in, take your finger and lift the slide. Make sure that it goes up and down without any issues. You know, take all your screws, put them back in here, and you want to make sure that this is down and snug before you take any pressure off. Otherwise, um, the diaphragm can jump out of the groove and cause you all sorts of fun um, as the diaphragm doesn't work correctly because it's not sealing. It operates on vacuum, which is what this little port is right here. This port runs down here and actually comes out right here. That's actually manifold vacuum that is drawing the diaphragm up. Um, yeah, it's a pressure differential thing. Anyway, so that's done. Um, let me put it on a different carburetor, but essentially that's what's going to go on. All right. Um, gosh, I think that's about it overall. So uh, comment or ask me questions, or you can find me on ADV Rider as Head to Wind. Okay, thanks, guys.